Hi everyone. In today's video, I am going to talk about how to construct and administer a questionnaire in research studies. Questionnaires seem to be very simple and yet in my humble experience, they can be very tricky to construct and administer. One false step can lead to uninterpretable data or an abysmally low return rate. Here I am in part one. I will give you six important tips and so that the video doesn't become too long and boring for you. In part two, I'm going to give you six more tips. So watch both the parts. The link to part two is also in the description section below. And let me know what you thought about these tips and whether they helped you in constructing and administering the questionnaire for your research studies. Let's get started. The first tip for me is that keep your questionnaire as short as possible. Your questionnaire should be as brief and solicit only information that is essential to the research. You should evaluate each item by asking yourself two questions. What do I intend to do with the information I'm requesting? And is it absolutely essential to have this information to solve part of the research problem or to answer part of the research question? Tip number two, keep the respondent's task simple and easy. Make the instrument as simple to read and respond to as possible. Remember, you are asking for people's time, which is a precious commodity for people these days. They are more likely to respond to a questionnaire and to do so quickly if they perceive it to be quick and easy to complete. Open-ended questions, those that ask people to respond with lengthy answers are time consuming and can be mentally exhausting for both the participants and the researcher. The usefulness of response to open-ended items rests entirely on the participants' skill to express their thoughts in writing. Those who write in the yes or no and I'll tell you exactly why style are few and far between. Some respondents may ramble, engaging in discussions that aren't even focused on answering your question. Furthermore, after answering 15 or 20 of these questions, your respondents will think you are actually asking them to write a book. Such a major exercise is unfair to those from whom you're requesting a favor. Tip number three, provide straightforward and specific instructions. Communicate exactly how you want people to respond. For example, don't assume that just because using, you are using a Likert scale, the one like you see on your screen, people will understand what to do with it. Some of them may have never seen such a scale before. They may answer each question with two or more responses. You never know how. Tip number four, use simple, clear and unambiguous language. Write questions that communicate exactly what you want to know. Avoid terms that your respondents may not understand, such as obscure words which are no longer used or some kind of a technical jargon or acronyms, short forms, abbreviations, which you may think people are familiar with, but they are not. Also avoid words that may have imprecise meanings, such as if you use a word like several, what does several mean? Uh, usually, what does usually mean? All right, so don't use words which may create doubt in the minds of the respondents. Tip number five, give a rationale for any item whose purpose may be unclear. You are asking people to do you a favor by responding to your questionnaire. Give them a reason to want to do the favor. Each question should have a purpose and in one way or another, you should make it purpose clear. So do not ask unnecessary questions which will waste the time of your respondents and annoy them. Tip number six and in today's video this is the last tip trying to keep the video short and engaging. So check for unwarranted assumptions which will be implicit in your question. So here is an example. Let's say you are asking a respondent how many cigarettes do you smoke each day? Now you can see the choices are given below the question. Now it seems to be a clear and unambiguous question especially if it is accompanied with certain choices so that all the respondent has to check is one of them. However, an assumption here you are making that the person is likely to be a smoker rather than a non-smoker, which isn't necessarily the case. 
A second assumption is that a person smokes the same number of cigarettes each day, but for many smokers, this assumption isn't viable. For instance, they may smoke when they are at home rather than at work or vice versa. How are the people in this group supposed to answer the question? Had the author of this question considered the assumption on which the question was predicated, he or she might have first asked questions such as, do you smoke cigarettes? Yes or no? Are your daily smoking habits reasonably consistent? That is, do you smoke about the same number of cigarettes each day? Yes or no? And then go on about asking the usual question. So I hope you found this video useful for beginning to construct and administer your questionnaire. In part two of the video, I will discuss the remaining six steps which will help you to do so. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for supporting the channel. I'll see you soon with part two, the link of which is in the description section below. Bye for now.